Welcome, one and all, to the Amazon E-Masters. We gave you a sneak preview, just a taste. That was exactly we what I was going to say. I mean, I know, see, great minds think like we're already in sync. I am Oshin. I am joined by the illustrious Nymera as we come into our first day of groups. Of course, plenty to talk about before them, but it's been, it's already been a roller coaster. We're kind of jumping in a little bit while this train's already moving. <laughs> It has been. So, you know, it is one of these, you know, great moments of the year again where we get to see the ERLs combine together and see what they can do when they face off. But as you said, we've already had one stage of the event happen. Yeah, we have had one, one stage happen already. And we got a little bit of a format explainer to tell you guys how exactly things are going to kind of progress from what has already happened to what's going to happen in the future. Hey everyone, and welcome to Amazon EU Masters, the tournament that pits the very best ERL teams against one another. 11 regions will compete, so join the hype and be the first to discover Europe's hottest new talent. Let's get right into it. Amazon EU Masters begins with the play-in group stages, where all regions will have at least one team represented with a total of 16 teams divided into four groups. A draw takes place to decide which teams are placed in what group. Each team will play against other teams in their group twice in a best of one. The top two seeds from each group will move into the play-in knockout stage. Knockout matchups will be determined by another group draw. Top seeded teams will be drawn against second seeded teams. Here, the eight teams will play in a best of three against one other team, with the winners qualifying for the main group stage, where 12 other teams have already pre-qualified. The group stage is where teams will compete in a double round robin, with the top two teams advancing to the knockout stage. The top seeds will play against the second seeds from other groups in a best of five, where the winners will move on to the semi-finals. Here, the final four teams will play a best of five and fight for their spot in the finals, where there'll be one more best of five to determine the Amazon EU Masters champion. Who will take the crown and become the next European king? I, for one, can't wait to find out. So mark your calendars, it's going to be a fun one, and we'll see you there. Well, I can guarantee you it won't be Carmine Corp. Sorry, a little bit of a dig there has to come in. The the back to back to back champion is not going to be making it back to EU Masters, but we got plenty to talk about because, in fairness, the LFL looked pretty damn good in plans anyway. Yeah, and while that is a joke, there is something to be said about just the legacy which this region and that representative from the region has left on this competition. Suddenly, Carmen Court aren't here anymore. We have to about talk about the teams which will pick up that mantle after this point. We have a lot of games today which are going to be very important benchmarks because we've already seen a lot of those benchmarks shift. Play-ins already, we saw some quite high uh, brand value names being knocked yeah. out of the very first preliminary stage. I mean, your boys, JDXL, they kind of uh, didn't really do much in the playing stages. We got a couple of clips, and I think, you know, big names like the JDXL just kind of not coming into it, but being replaced, I suppose, by an even bigger kind of story of, you know, the Greek team coming out and yes. playing exceptionally well. Yeah, so one of the things we looked at this playing stage was that there were so many of these accredited DRL teams which were in the playing stage, and yet, it came down to a best of three from the Portuguese representatives for the win versus Anorthosis Famagusta. It went to three games. It was an incredibly exciting best of three with big team fights, a lot of creative drafting and adaptation as it went on. And it was Anorthosis that ended up winning out the day with that big team fighting presence with it. So even though this was credited to be, uh, well, slated to be this very difficult tournament for the non-accredited ERLs. We see one of them, not even that, we see a couple of them making it through into the playing stage. Yeah, it's a bit of a Zeri diff, unfortunately, in that last one for, for the win. They weren't the ones with it. But like you mentioned as well, on the other side of this one, it was JDXL who sadly did drop out. And I'm looking to say, y'all been making a big splash yeah. about getting your third seed and you didn't <laughs> even get them out of playing, man. What happened? I well, you know, all the best regions have a team go out and play in because Bison's also got knocked out. Illuminar also didn't make it through that stage. But this is not really, for me, a dig at those regions. I think you just got to look at an Orthosis and teams like Henk here as well, who just put on an awesome show. Now, of course, Henk sadly didn't make it through to the group stage, the main stage of the event. But even against JDXL, put up a really good game to knock them out in this last game. Yeah, it really was just a... Straight up, uh, a better performance from a lot of the teams within JDXL's group. And again, this is a, you know, bi-yearly tournament. It happens twice, but you got to show up when it happens. So sadly for JDXL, they shall not be making it yeah. into the group stage. And then unfortunately, they'll be following in the same footsteps as their uh, LEC counterparts. Gosh, it is a little bit painful for the org right now. Of course, they had some 
difficulties heading into the event with Rasta Swatch that they couldn't quite overcome, and I'm sure there are many teams which are now looking at these opportunities because there are other teams, which we were just saying about, that actually haven't made it as well. Bison's one of the most exciting ERL teams. The crazy drafters that throw everything onto the wall and say, can you deal with our creativity? They didn't make it out. White Dragons, the other LP LOL Portuguese team, took them down in this game and they made it through to the knockout portion of play and sadly they lost their own best of three to try and make it further in the tournament but actually speaking of this again you know we've got these big name teams but these other regions which sometimes fall by the wayside and get a little bit caught up in the narrative of oh no let's just pay attention to the larger regions did really well this time around and it's made this event already very exciting for me as a viewer yeah, absolutely. I will say a little bit of a consolation shout out to the, the LPLOL because they had such an exceptionally good play in stage oh, geez, and got two teams up into the knockouts. Unfortunately, weren't able to qualify from there, but we do obviously have to talk about the LFL guys coming in. Game Warden by Tadley B. They joined the likes of the Greek team as well as SK Prime to round out the rest of our groups. Yeah, and now they've been slotted into the groups and we've got to see our full picture of how things are going to get a little bit crazy because as soon as we saw that Vitality B and Game World were in, you think, okay, well, there are four LFL teams and they cannot be in the same group as each other. The initial group draw without the players teams being slotted into it looked very different to suddenly Group A, Vitality B slotted in there, Group D, Game World slotted in there, which bumps up the expected level of play just because the LFL is so strong within the ERL system. I actually think that all of these groups are looking fairly tumultuous. I think we can see a lot of power from across the board in these. I mean, absolutely. I think the big thing is you're looking at even like you go for between Group A. Oh, that's a pretty tough group. You got the Ultra League of Champions in there, the Prime League Champions, Giants, obviously a historical org within mm. Europe. And, and that's not even the hardest group, in my opinion. I think you can make a very solid argument that there's difficult groups across the board there. And it's going to be a very much, you know, uh, whoever hits the ground running kind of situation, because I feel like with especially such yes. a short turnaround of games, you can't really afford to just drop here willy, willy nilly. Yeah, if you drop one stupid game, that could be genuinely a tournament over. It's often been a point of, I, I suppose, one of the narratives about the Amazon European Masters as an event is that you will always get one playoffs team just rocket fueled through the playoffs bracket because they've had a couple of extra games to figure out how they want to play this tournament. The playoffs of these individual ERLs was on a different patch. The patch has changed quite significantly at this point. And while we've seen the major regions across the world start picking up steam in terms of the amount of best of fives that they're playing, the ERL teams which are here at this event need to find their feet very, very quickly, especially if they are going up against teams which had a bit more game time to play on. Yeah, absolutely. Well, speaking of game time, we're going to bring up the schedule today and tell you who is going to be playing. I got our first game of the day. It is going to be Machko Esports versus Dusty. And I will say that one's going to be a little bit of a weird one for me because I feel like Dusty come in as heavy favorites, <laughs> but you can never underestimate the Italians. Yeah, we have a great schedule today, but if we are going to focus on that first game, I love the fact that we have two just insane drafting teams. Dusty are a very comfort pick-based team. They've picked some strong combinations. They've been picking Yasuo, Diana. But on the other side, Machko, they are just insane with what they lock in. Another org which has been continually at this event. They, particularly last summer, really made a dent. Even in a 0-6 groups run, they were in the group of death and they gained a lot of fans. Actually, they actually got a lot of backing from Carmine Core and their fan mm -hmm. base when they saw how uh, plucky and persevering this team was, even in the face of such odds. And I hope that they can get that same kind of response again, because the PG Nats, for their representative, going up against the NLC first seed, it's going to be a tough game to start it off. Absolutely. And of course, later on in the day, I think everyone's going to be keeping an eye on some of those last few uh, matches sure. of the day. Unicorns of Love, of course, coming in the last game of the day will be a pretty big one to see how the Prime League kind of steps up to that particular mark. But looking a little bit more towards our first game again, Machko versus Dusty, I wanted to kind of pick your brain right now because Dusty are coming in now as, as I said, heavy favorites, but not only that, the kind of the, the NLC champions. They are, and they did it in such glorious fashion. Um, sometimes you look at a series and you just see how perfect all of the storylines worked out. Kerberos, Dusty's top laner in his very first finals at the ERL level, was reverse swept by Singularity, by Orcs, actually, on the other side. Caster, of course, <laughs> we've both worked with sometimes. And um, now in this split, he's, uh, Kerberos has come in, and he reverse swept to his first ERL title yep. with Dusty. It has been so exciting to see this team do it in such glorious fashion versus X7, this team which in spring was one of the Amazon European Masters tournament favorites. And now while they had some difficulties in that summer split, managed to recover, became a very dominant team towards the end of the split. 
but Dusty saw it home, and they did it playing their style. They had this mental fortitude when 0-2 down, and they picked all their comfort picks and just said, right, let's run it at them. Let's see what we can do on an individual level. So for them coming into this event, I would love to see them continue that form, stick to their comfort picks, and really blast out some games to give the NLC fans like myself, some hope after, of course, we now are <laughs> down to those two seeds, which we're used to. I, I like I like how it's like, you know, you kind of like have as much hopium as you possibly can. And it's just like, come on, guys, give us a semi it's a, at least. It's a like, const, <laughs> it's, it is a constant state of affair. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. But again, on the other side of this one, again, why we always love to see what the PG Nats can bring. It feels like we're having a little bit of a change of the guard in terms of the standard for the PG Nats. It has been Morningstar for so many years, just kind of constantly representing this region. Yeah. But now Machko have kind of strung together a a couple of e masters now in a row and they are starting to well, build off of it funny. and even people people like click on their side who have just been around for years and funnily enough you mentioned that i was speaking to Moy moonboy one of the uh, pg knights casters who i reached out to for some advice on uh, what to look out <laughs> for in this team and Matchco actually, they merged with Raccoon, one of the other teams back in a, a couple of years ago so if you combine both of those teams and their appearances this is now their sixth split at in a row consecutively at this event this is a team which has actually managed to keep going that now they haven't always found the results they wanted uh in my very first um cast of this tournament it was last year last summer where matchka were in that zero six run in that group d which was so crazy against you know i think it was mouse sports and a couple of other very strong teams at that event but they've always been creative always been very persevering right they have this real grit to them and for them to keep coming back, and this time, of course, even after a difficult spring where they were locked, uh, knocked out in play-ins, I would love to see them, again, just step up to the plate and show this NLC team what they can do. Well, well wait, we will shall wait no longer. We are going to see picks and bands coming up on the screen. The Ivern might look like a random one, but that is oh. a very big count, uh, pocket pick for the side of Machiko. Something they have played with the Rengar quite a few times. So excited yes. to see Dusty give it a little bit of extra, you know, kind of just respect. Yeah, so a couple of things we need to watch out for here. The Darius that goes towards Kerberos. Kerberos, by the way, used to play for Matchco. It is a grudge match. Yep. Well, I wouldn't say a grudge match, but it is a rivalry between <laughs> player and old team. Other things to kind of watch out for here, the jungle matchup, Seaboy versus Linsers. These uh, Seaboy was in Bifrost, so representing the NLC at this tournament last split. Linsers has come in as this 18 year old younger player with a lot of confidence and they've both had very large champion pools and been part of the creative force of both of their teams. So it wouldn't surprise me to see something a little bit different picked up in the jungle as well. As you're saying, the Ivan Ranga was one of those combos which Mashko was picking up. Yeah, I also remember specifically last uh, EU Masters in spring. Ha ha, I believe got the uh, the zillion pick up and was able to kind of get a pentacle <laughs> on it so right at the end. So oh yeah. Very much a, a champion that can be picked up. Very excited to see what they can do with that one now. But Machko, they've got themselves first priority. It's going to be okay. the Renekton. We've moved on to a patch now where Renekton just has so much versatility and just being able to kind of make those big mid game fights happen on your side. Yeah, and ACD uh, was the regular season MVP for the PG Nationals. Kerberos on the other side has sometimes struggled in the laning phase, but has loved getting counter pick and sticking towards uh, picks, which he's just able to impact the game on from a laning side of things. The Sejuani, though, while it is more meta, was something that Kerberos was solo killing a Fiora matchup. It was Chasey, a Korean challengers player that came over to the NLC, top laner of X7. And he was doing that in those finals, which was part of that reverse sweep. He picks up the Sejuani again. It is a difficult matchup into the Renekton, but already I'm seeing this matchup topside and I'm like, okay, you might think it's Sleeper, but when you have these two players, I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, and it's also a little bit of a denial from the Sejuani as well, because at the end of the day, Seaboy can pick that up, and Sejuani and Renekton combination yeah. is disgustingly good with the single Treasury. target CC. So I'd like to see Dusty kind of say, look, we're happy with the top side being a little bit safer, kind of just have a beefy front line as such. But with the Aphelios picked up here, this is a bit of a, a kind of departure from what we're normally seeing. Machko going for the Lucian yeah. Nami, but if you're thinking of all the other major regions, yeah. Aphelios is very much fell down that priority. It has, but Stend loves Thrash, and so Archeron did an interview with Stend uh, on his own channel, and uh, Stend was talking about how he has always been a Thrash uh, player, and in Game 5 of the NLC Finals, uh, he spoke to Dunvox there and was like, all right, what can we do to pick this up? Let's pick a 2v2. <laughs> and while he was a Thrash OTP, this split, 
he's been a Nautilus player. You want to know how say. many Nautilus games he's played? This is his 15th this split. And when you're in a best of one region, that is an awful lot of games. In fact, Kasing, who was his finals opponent, was told, uh, we did a media day and uh, each of the players was said to say something positive about the other team. And Kasing was like, oh, a positive thing about Stend is that he plays Nautilus because that's just what he does. He picks it up again, Aphelios Nautilus, able to fight very early into the game, into the Lucian Nami, should be a fiery bot lane as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the thing is, on looking at this, Aphelios Nautilus versus Lucian Nami, if you can just get that first kill on either of these sides, it just opens up the map so much for either team and will be a big decider in terms of how we end up kind of seeing how the match ends up developing towards those mid to late game team fights. But the Akshan gets banned away alongside the Akali. A lot of A's taken off in this second round of bans. And again, oh, just no, kind they're of gonna ban the... Alex next. Ah, gonna... gonna... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, it's the solo cast now. But it again, it is just yeah. kind of picking up these uh these pocket picks away from Machko yes. and then Machko kind of identifying, look, we just don't need solo carry potential. Yeah, and on the other side, Backland was actually one of, I think it was the NLC, so uh, he wasn't the overall MVP for the NLC, but in terms of the analysts, Eyes was one of the real front runners for it, and the Akali was a big pick for that. On the other side, Hoho has been a Echo Action 2 trick, according once again to uh, Moonboy, who helped me out with prepping for this team before he went pro. Now, of course, he plays everything, but it's just worth keeping that in mind, especially since Backland plays a lot more of the melee picks like the Yasuo, which is already banned out, like the Akali. And having something that which can bully that those champions early is not something you particularly want to play into. Yeah, I completely agree. I like the Talia band here, and I like how for the little bit Dusty kept our A bands going in there with the Azir. But again, just big hyper carries that can kind of just you know change how the map and how the game is going to be played. Very good to see those kind of band away in this one here. Now, Dusty, you're gonna to have to pick something. I imagine it to be their jungler right now. We actually haven't seen any at all, well, to be perfectly hmm, honest, in terms of the jungle band apart do. from that Ivern. The thing is, I was wondering about this because Seaboy and Linces have such weird champion pools. I was wondering if there was going to be particular value in holding counter pick for that. But picking up the Wukong, it's a pick which has had high value in so many regions, even after so many nerfs. It's just going to do the job. And it has an auto attack reset for Sejuani in that top side, should anything revol uh, revolve around the top side of the map for that perma uh, permafrost passive. So now you look over to the other side and you're waiting for what random pick is going to come in. And it is Hyper Digger Shaco! I, just... I love this team! <laughs> I love them so much! <laughs> I mean, like, 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 let's obviously wait until we see what, you know, Dusty want to go for into this, but like, this just shows, this, I will say, like, the Heimerdinger Shaco combination, you think of the boxes, the turrets, how difficult it is to actually get on top of people if you're not this on the ridiculous. objective first. You are just going to have so much disengage and just poke available to you that LeBlanc comes in just to try and maybe burst someone out, but honestly, Machko have an incredibly good yeah. comp at stopping what Dusty wants to do. If Machko set up in an area, that is then just like a DMZ. You do not get to do that damage in that area, you just died. That is it. So I'm looking at this and now the LeBlanc comes in. It is Backland's most played champion, probably his most famous champion too. He was getting 25 stack Medjai's games, which of course is my favorite item in the game and I love him for it. And I think that he has a chance to potentially outplay the jung mid jungle TV2 in this case. But Shaco Heimendinger, for me, this is a really weird blend because one of my favorite teams in the world is Detonation Focus Me from the Japanese region. And they used what? to have the most famous- Crazy. I know it's crazy, right? <laughs> and they had the most tenured Heimendinger player of all time in Sera. So I've cast actually a lot of Heimendinger. I'm kind of more familiar with how it works. And the Shaco can very much help in terms of helping out the Heimendinger get through that little bit shaky early game when he is perma pushing. The Shaco can come on call and answer that. I love what's going to happen with this top side of the map. I I don't necessarily know how to work down the entire compositions because this is just weird, but I love yeah. to see the creativity and I love to see them go uh, and show their style on the European Master Stage. I mean, this is going to be, from what I can tell anyway, in terms of the stats I'm looking at, the first Jacko game for Seaboys. So, uh, one of the first is, actually yeah. this season as a whole. I was going to say, but I mean, well, I'll be totally honest with you. I would be putting pretty decent money on this less than double figures in terms of the amount of Shaco's played okay, throughout I have every number. single I have like league. <laughs> I have the number. Go um, on. How many games do you think it is? I'm going to say three. Give me a number. I'm going to say three. Not including this one, so this will be four. Okay. Not including this one, it is four. You were one Damn. Off. Damn. And three of those games were wins. So this will be another game for this champion, uh, which not many people get that much chance to practice again this time. And when you pick strange things, and this is something which we see a lot with our experimental teams, like your Bisons, which didn't make it into this position, is you need to be familiar with your picks. We get a 5v5, we get a fist fight, let's go!
All right, they're gonna look for it. Hook does land to get the root down. They're gonna try and get on top of Seaboy and ruin his jungle start. The first blood is there, but it's all a bit chaotic right now. Exhaust comes out to try and keep the jungler alive, but it's a double kill for the Sejuani. It's a two for one trade. Both junglers are traded, but it's a two kills over to Kerberos. This is an absolute mess. And that top side, which we were talking about, Kerberos being a comfort player, a player which can take um, a lot of power in an individual matchup, even with something like a Sejuani, gets two kills right from the off. That is a huge amount of value given over to Dusty very early into the game. I want to see which summoners were blown at this point, because if you're seeing Seaboy already at this point set behind, of course he doesn't have a flash to blow, but if suddenly he's behind on the map where his other lanes don't have summoners to commit to engagements, that is going to be a serious problem for Matchgo coming into this game. And again, this just really good heads up play from Dusty. They recognize, look, we know that you're going to have to start boxes here on the Shaco. You're mm. not going to have a hell of a lot to really deal with. You know what counters that? Just a straight up Scryers. So you're going to have the Sweeper yep. there. Just stops anything from really happening. There's no defense really coming out from the Shaco box. And it's just an extra little bit of gold mm. at the end of it. So uh, it turns out no other summoners were actually blown from Matchgo. So I was like, oh man, if you've blown flashes, th that wasn't actually the case of what happened. It was Sten that uh, blew his own summoners. So maybe we'll have to see what happens in that 2v2, particularly because it was the Lucian that picked up the kill for the side of the Matchgo. Great for the top side of Dusty, but we have to check in with this 2v2 some point later into the game. But as it stands, Dusty not going to get forced off of the wave just yet, and they'll be able to safely hit level two. Should be fine to be able to uh, figure it all out. And of course, Seaboy going to be able to kind of be a bit more creative, shall we say, with his pathing. And that's what we expect to see from the Shaco. So really curious to see what he's able to kind of make work with this one. And again, he's going to have a lot of very good, honestly, follow-up in any of these lanes. I'm obviously going to be looking up towards that top lane with the Renekton as the biggest second. kind of point. So you know how you want to get your smite off cooldown really quickly? Did Linsis smite the box level one? Is that why he's got an extra charge missing from it? Actually, there was so much stuff which happened in that level one. He's on three charges of that smite. I actually think he smited the box level one. And he's got an extra... He's like, I know that you're waiting for your second charge. It doesn't really mean that much, but just a small thing. I was looking at the, uh, the, uh, the two jungle items in those jungle's boxes. I'm like, that feels weird. Yeah, it definitely feels a little... Uh off shall we say but you know much like the uh mysteries of the universe i guess we'll never know we'll just have what? to remember it there's not like there's vods or anything to look back oh, on not this, like but... this actually <laughs> happened on while being recorded crazy yeah. what happens here but <laughs> bring it back to these two games two teams uh because i again we see this creative level one we see the creative drafts it really does just go back to what I thought this matchup would, would be about. It is just this match of innovators, this match of mad science, of course, with the Heimdinger in the mid lane, very, very fitting for that one. And this is why I love Matchgo. You know, I am an NLC caster. I've seen this NLC team play so much throughout this year, and I love the story of Dusty as well. But seeing Matchgo not be cowed by previous tournament results at this level and to say, we are going to play our game, we're going to play crazy, it just makes me want to see how this team does and finally see them get that top eight performance. This would be a great start to it if they could do it, but they are, of course, that one kill behind. We'll have to see them recover what is a, a tenuous early game for them. And this is the beauty about the EU Masters as well. I love what you kind of said about, you know, Machko kind of going in a bit, you know, guns blazing, trying to go for something yeah. crazy because you have to do it because at the end of the day, it's best of one. You can just catch someone off at a bad game. You can just get a good result going for you because you don't have to deal with it in a best of five or best of three situation. So giving that little bit of extra oomph to your draft and giving that little something else to think about for the side of Dusty, who, which by the way, did ban pocket picks, Akshan, Ivern. These mm -hmm. were things that were banned away as well. So nice to see that Machko is not just come in as a, a little bit of a one-trick pony. Yeah, and I think that's the real um, evolution of this, right? Where you have not just a team which can play crazy, but play enough crazy that they have more crazy to put on the table when you think you can get rid of it. The question is, of course, whether they convert on it at this point. You can see that uh, Backline hasn't, hasn't actually backed since getting those two early assists. So does go back, get a dark seal, starts to get a couple of items in there. And now I'm starting to look at these, uh, particularly this bot lane as well, which is doing very well considering it is this 2v2 and a very reliable uh, fight starting bot lane once you get past that level six, I'm looking for Dusty very soon to start looking for skirmishes around their early initiating picks around the mid jungle on the bot side of the map. I mean, that's why it's called the uh, the meta, shall we say. You know, the most efficient uh, way to win the game is usually kind of what you generally see the pro players going for. Of course, this is Wani Wukong, great frontline engage to kind of follow up mm -hmm. with the Nautilus. So. If you don't make much, as much as we're praising them for the crazy picks, if you don't get anything going with them with these particular ones, you're going to end up in a little bit of a bad situation. So yeah. curious to see what Dusty can do. And again, it's going to be around those big kind of either Rift Herald or Dragon Fights. 
And speaking of that dragon, um, we often do see first dragon kind of taken in an uncontested manner nowadays. It's not really fought over, but normally it comes from the side of the dominant bot side. While um, Raresh, who has been one of the real veterans of the PG Nats, was ahead very early into the game and got that kill for them during that level one, it is going to be um, Den Voxne and Stan who have control over this lane right now. So Dusty have first crack at the dragon should they wish to take it. I'll see what they want to go for. It's going to push and pull right now. You're going to see a lot of just kind of ping-ponging of the waves as we get to start to see solo laners get towards their level sixes. So you're going to have the double ability coming out here for the LeBlanc and, of course, the Glacial Prison for the Sejuani. And with the Ignite available as well, you can see there's going to be a hell of a lot of uh, kill potential or just delay potential because he wants to try and crash this wave. Yeah, I was wondering exactly what was happening there because, I mean, Mashko have vision on top side of the map. Maybe maybe Kerberos was trying to force a flash. Uh, I don't really see what that was about. Oh, it could also have been something about this. I mean, because you don't have the Unleashed Teleports, not necessarily about this dragon fight. But either way, Kerberos uh, stamping the authority on the lane. <laughs> Yeah, so stamping his authority, but I will say is that uh, with Kerberos taking that early teleport, you did have a teleport advantage there for the Renekton. Not really under real much threat now that he has a Dominus, so able to kind of just get that little bit of pressure on top side, use that to kind of transition down to a Dragon, and again, you have a Heimerdinger and a Shaco. You get a lot of extra little yes. minion boys to try and just tank this up. It's actually not that hard to take an early Dragon with this style of a composition. Yeah, even with the changes to dragons, which make them harder to take, these champions are ones which do it uh, without really uh, taking a hit to the HP bar uh, at the same time. You know, something which I found out really interestingly? Um, I was looking at the Dragon Slayer buffs, you know, the ones you get from killing all of these things. I actually didn't know that dragons get harder to kill and do more damage to you the more dragons you've killed in a game. So yep. if you have like four dragons, they actually do more damage than they're harder to kill. I just never knew about that. Things yeah. you can learn about League of Legends, even when we spend hundreds of hours per month watching it. It's crazy. It's educational streaming right now. That's what we're at right now. It's just, uh, it's interesting as well, because you know, even if you wait, I think it's, uh, if you kill the Rift Herald at 1345, the first Rift Herald, it will spawn yeah. and instantly die as soon as it comes out for the second one, because Baron <laughs> will be available for it. So little things, little things like that that just yeah. kind of change the dynamic of the game. And we'll see now with the first dragon going over to Machko, they're going to be very happy with that. Ooh, Ooh that's a bad that's arc, dangerous. Bad miss. Very dangerous. You got the Dominus and you haven't been stacking up that passive. So Kerberos needs to be very careful. Doesn't have his ultimate just yet, yeah. but you can see that ACD doesn't quite know that. So he's just giving it a bit of respect. And again, with those two seconds, you can't be 100%. Yeah, misses the Arctic Assault. So things get a little bit awkward for a moment. That's the route into the hook. Oh, but it turns into an Aqua Prison. They're going to get the bubble out. There's going to be the Moonlight Vigil. Nicely spread across people. The Ignite goes down, the heal has been used by Click to defend, and that's just going to be a big wave lost here because they don't actually have a great way of turning it around. So the level difference being huge there for Dusty in the bot side. Yeah, and we see that match go are going towards this Herald. This is one of those rare occasions where you do see bot lane is not moving towards it at all, and it's going to be a 3v3 oh. topside brawl. They're going to try and get it. We're going to see Seaboy flash away, but the Renekton's already dead because he had no Dominus. There's going to be the ult from the Wukong to knock down the Clown. And you're kind of dealing with this Heimerdinger off to the side, but there's no real contest coming out from this one here. And one small little movement, Dusty just blow this game open. They've got nearly a 3,000 gold lead. I love how Dusty approached both of these fights. Bot side, they just end up ticking over to level six that little bit earlier after their strong early laning phase. And in the top side, we have the NLC jungler, the NLC champion versus the NLC representative from last split in Linsus versus Seaboy. Finally takes him down for that kill and Dusty have now really got a leg over Matchko in this early game. They have a Herald in pocket. They've taken plates in bot side. Even though they lost that early dragon, they have started to start steamrolling over the early game. Now we see exactly how it went. And again, it's just a bit of a death ball and ACD just gets a bit caught out. Honestly, it just feels yeah. like if you're not really set up for this all in, you're not really going to be able to survive it in any way. And it might be a bit different if you had your support there, if you had your bot lane there, particularly because Lucian Nami are very disruptive on the initial engage. One of the things about Renekton, though, is that he's meant to be very good at first Herald fights, particularly because you're meant to be at that point when you've stacked up double empowered abilities when you have your Dominus. But as you're rightly saying, Dominus wasn't there. The Rage wasn't there either for an immediate Q heal turnaround into an empowered stun to get huge amounts of healing and burst damage. And ACD just wasn't in a position to fight and Dusty Punish. Very good punish, and this is where we start to see the cracks coming out from this uh, interesting draft from Machko. Again, great when you get ahead with something like a Shako and Heimerdinger, you keep the pace, you're the one kind of dictating what happens, but you fall behind, it's why we see things like the yeah. Wukong and, and the Sejuani be so meta, so, so prominent within pro play, because it's just very difficult to deal with. 
And I'm not going to criticize the composition completely because I think a lot of this is also just on being outplayed, right? Because you can see what happened. Level one, very intelligent from Dusty. The bot lane in particular is kind of winning to a degree that you don't expect. And Matchko are starting to fall behind the power point, which they're meant to be playing around. So it's a combination of factors. And if we talk about this bot Here side, well, top side's already got two kills to assist. Let's try and add another one into that. Linsis ganking the top lane. Yeah, they're just going to go into him right now. They do miss the ultimate from the Sejuani. You flash in, you're still tanking. And oh. you're going to get a shutdown coming over now to the Renekton. They will be able to trade it back, but it did cost Dusty a lot more than they anticipated. Well, Lensis might actually end up getting jack, uh, jumped on by Seaboy at this point. Does have oh, the second cast of the Cyclone. Does, ooh, he does get away from the Fox getting the fear, but it does not matter because Seaboy gets himself over the wall, and that's why the Shaco is not only annoying, but also incredibly powerful. Yeah, just jumps over the wall, and I was actually incorrect in that one. So it didn't even use the Cyclone in that play, but that missed uh, Sejuani ultimate ends up giving ACD enough room to outplay in this situation where they couldn't around that Herald. Use that early game rage, double empowered ability um, to make sure that you have so much power in these early skirmishes. And what starts this off is this empowered Q, which gives more HP than maybe they were bargaining on. The Dominus comes out, another empowered ability, and it's the empowered W has so much damage in this top side. It's a really good outplay by ACD, using the mistakes which Dusty had to make sure that he could at least turn this around for another kill. And I mean, I, I, I kind of have to say that's a little bit of an unforced error from Kerberos. Like, all you have to do is wait for your permafrost to go off. You don't have to throw it preemptively. Get the extra CC. You know he has nowhere to go. You could have been able to kind of get that pretty much scot-free. But again, little moments like that are going to be Dusty yeah. kind of coming back into this one here. As we can see now, Kerberos to be... Ooh, not quite able to get the ultimate there from the Heimerdinger to land, but so far so good in this mid lane. Yes, you're a little bit behind in CS, but he's kind of putting down the pressure. Yeah, you've taken uh, taken plates, but the problem is you're not able to transfer this anywhere, and it means that the bot lane can play in isolation. It's not like you've got a Silas or a Talia running down towards you. Uh, Hoho does have the flash, might have to use it. No, oh, well, he's not going to get a chance to use it. You because... just had to praise him. You just yeah, had to. I do did. It. Just had to get, say that was a good move from him, and sadly, because he goes so far, Far underneath the turret took a hell of a lot of damage and ends up getting very much worse for wear. Does Seaboy feel like he can maybe go for a bit of a steal? He definitely feels like it. Gravit him on the gun though makes this very difficult. They think he's left and he's gonna try and steal it. Oh, it got very, very close. The cyclone's gonna be good and Seaboy shall be taken down the tidal wave just to maybe give him a little bit of a chance, but ends up being Dusty picking up their first Drake of the game. Yeah, that's actually really unfortunate for Matchko because this early game jungler for all intents and purposes in the Shaco is now at three deaths. You didn't get that dragon. You are even on your neutrals in that sense, and you're very far behind in gold in important roles. I think I can see the logic of going for that steal because if you can at least stack that up and threaten some kind of miracle soul later on, you feel a little bit better about that kind of slim opportunity into the future. Of course, they don't do that. It doubles down on the losses which they've had, and now you're staring at so many powerful members on Dusty, you can play out the game in any number of ways to make your life very, very difficult. Currently, they're choosing to go towards sidelines, just make sure the backlink can get out onto the map. 5,000 gold leads, just a little bit underneath, and Dusty are very happy to maybe take another fight at this Rift Herald. And this is the thing as well, is you, you see how quickly they're able to just kind of overload a side lane, like you just yes. mentioned. And it's just little things like this. Like you said, Ha Ha hasn't really been able to move away from this mid lane, so he kind of just gets a bit complacent. Yeah, and this is a really good rotation by Dusty because they know that uh, LeBlanc is resetting, actually moved the Sejuani from top to mid. LeBlanc can catch the top wave. That's where we want LeBlanc in the next phase of play anyway. And then you move your mid bot lane to mid lane. It's just a really good timing from Dusty to get all of their lanes into the place that they want them to be. They have the lane allocations they want to, especially with this mid lane, being able to counter Highbanger's push. And while all this is happening, they get a dragon on the way and they get this fight. It's so, all coming up dusty right now as uh, Seaboy looking to try and maybe make something work in the middle. Interesting enough, I'm not going to try and pretend to be a Shaco jungle expert right now. I see a lot of AP Shacos, a lot well, of full AD. Enough, He's going full uh, tank. Well and, well, uh, Rush. Yeah, well, yeah. Continue. Mm. Funny enough, well, funny funny enough. <laughs> so, you know, we talked about this uh, this time and again. Um, we might have to talk about the Shaco again, though, because it's just being really obnoxious and being able to slow people down. I have to see if this does evolve into anything more. Backlands moving over. Let me set up these turrets and do anything about it. I'm not entirely sure right now. Okay, backing off. Right, okay, back to the story. Let's talk about the Hymen again and the DFM angle, because of course everything leads back to LGL. Actually, the other team which I know that plays Shaco is also Detonation Focus V, and they played they actually played Shaco LeBlanc. And what you end up doing, particularly with the Frostfire, is something similar to what you do with the Stride Breaker, which we saw back in 2020 summer. I know a couple of LPL teams were playing it back then too, is what you do is you'd 
queue into the team, be completely invisible, and you'd hit someone for a slow, which means that everyone else can combo up onto that target. So the AD carry sat there and goes, oh wait, I'm slowed for this amount of the, like the 90% or whatever, that's really, really difficult. Of course, a little bit different with the Frostfire, but the logic is still the same. You're meant to get in there and set up a knockout blow from someone else. It does seem to be the angle right now coming out here from Machko as the full tank Shako with the ignite on his back just trying to see if he can maybe find an opportunity somewhere but with towers falling left right and center Dusty kind of smothering them out of the game for the moment and this is the thing they're not really letting Machko get up to their power spikes you always think of the Lucian yeah. Nami as this big combination but it doesn't really become obnoxiously hard to deal with until you get that Imperial Mandate until you know you have the damage to oh, be able no. to basically 100 to 0 I... someone. You know how my brain works? Sometimes it just goes into magical fantasy land where things don't actually matter about League of Legends. We could technically have uh, the Shoko clone hit by the clone Cyclone of Linsus. Um, I leave that so what you're telling me is hands. what you're telling me is is this is just the Clone Wars? Oh my god! <laughs> Begun the Clone Wars have. <laughs> Seeing this in game one, we thought it was actually Amazon European Masters. No, it's actually one of the prequel movies. Crazy. Yeah, I know, what right? Here? <laughs> <laughs> it's just insane how EU Masters just has a, a, a fantastic scope of so many different things. But we'll see if the we Clone Wars. We'll see if the Clone Wars end up being a prominent we even part have in this fight. We even yeah. Have we also All have kills them. onto the jungle apparently. Well, we're gonna try and turn that over to a support. They got the jungler trying to do something, but again, it's a tank. Shaco, he's not really gonna do anything outside of where he outside of setup so you get the kill onto the nami who's exceptionally squishy and then you just back away rift herald gets to go down shelly's going to be able to do her favorite thing in the whole wide world and honestly machko i do like the idea of what your draft was bringing but the execution just really leads a lot to lots of people desire yeah and that's what i'm starting to really see in this game because I, I like the composition i can see where it works but they just got a bit out and a little bit out skirmished dusty they're on some of the comfort picks as well backland very comfortable pick for him lincer of course played so many different junglers though the work on fits very much into his wheelhouse and then Voxnay on the fls another power pick for him dusty are comfortable they've out and what that means is that match go haven't really managed to activate what is a very intriguing composition and now you're looking at um, Dusty actually at this point being in a very strong position and setting themselves up for this 1-0 start to the groups and uh, get themselves off on the right foot. I mean, next dragon is up and available. We have an Ocean Soul. Both teams have a dragon a piece. As you can see, yep. Machko don't want to let this one go. Remember, they would love to be able to set up on the objective first, but because of the big fat wallet that Dusty has over them right now, it's kind of a wallet diff right now. and They're kind of just forcing them into yeah. little bad trades. So things that you have to keep an eye out for here. Backland has picked up my favorite item in the game, Magi Soul Stealer. It's very good right now. When you twin, twin that up with the Ludens, you get an extra mythic stat with it, of course. And that's magic penetration. You have very high magic pen for this point in the game for a very low amount of gold. If Backland wins in this fight and Dusty come away with some kills, Backland is going to be very hard to deal with. We saw this a lot in the regular season from NLC. And in this game, if Macho fail this last fight, which is already going to be difficult for them, at that point, it gets that much more hard. Yeah, you see Seaboy just taking so much poke right now. Looks like he's going towards a Demonic Embrace as a second item. Maybe a Rylan's Crystal Scepter could be literally either as they build from the exact same components, but Kerberos being separated from the rest of the team. But again, a fr Frozen Fist, Frozen Heart, says Wani, is not an easy target to try and burst down. Neither is this dragon at the moment. 6,000 HP on that. Blackland has to just get himself out over the back of the pit because he had the flash to make sure he did not get killed. Kerberos thinking about going in as the Clone Wars can begin. Seaboy loses his, and now it's a 2v none in the Clone Wars situation. It's a very oh, long, drawn-out setup as we finally get the Moonlight Vigil coming out as you get a little bit of a good Sonya's here from the Nautilus. You're going to have the Wukong try and go for something. They're going to try and TP ACD back into this, and this fight's still going, Nymera. It's still going, but how does Machko escape their own turret line? They can stand by it, but they can't do much go. else on it. Seaboy's going go. in. Hey, Seaboy gets in. He gets the steal. That's exactly what he wanted to do. Drops down the Ignite and keeps Machko healthy in this. They just needed to delay long enough to make sure they could get the steal. Okay, so Dragon goes over to Machko in a situation which I would not have favored them in. I think a big turning point was actually Rarash making sure that Backland couldn't get keep off that continual poke force the flash out of the leblanc especially when you're looking towards these low health targets backland couldn't finish off any kills does get an assist in that confrontation though so you can see those medi stacks starting to stack up get past that 10 mark point and you get movement speed attached to it as well at that point i think uh 
Dusty still happy with how some of this fight came off. You can see how difficult it is to engage into these turrets. At least they didn't lose any kills. That's the big thing. Dusty really wanted to try it. And this is why we said we can see what Machiko want to do with this. See how difficult it is to get that Wukong in, to get the Sejuani to actually become the front line. And this was just a really heads up play because Machiko say, look, if we can just get Seaboy into the pit, he can get the smite steal. They can't steal. No, they can't. And well, he does die for the attempt. I mean, he tried, he uh, died for the non-steal earlier, the attempted steal. This time does get away with it. And those one and four does again keep those neutrals stacking along and we know how empowered how empowered dragons are nowadays they've been uh, buffed 50 percent from dude? earlier in that split and any of these that you get is very important no but way we saw how no much way. they do away from the objective they set up first and this is a barren rush it's a barren rush and it's, it's not even just a barren rush it's they're a not even aware steal. they have no idea they've literally no idea they're putting themselves onto blue wolf to maybe try and steal that now you can see blackland maybe how, thinking something's up how much can he do now he knows now he knows but it's too late the baron has been taken much go peachy nuts that was insane genius Oh, it's some Italian magic match code. They use the turrets. And what were you saying around that first dragon? Oh yeah, these champions, they don't take much damage when they're taking objectives because you can put all of these extra adds down, these extra mobs, these turrets, and they take the Baron so early into the game, it can stabilize them. Suddenly, after all this talk about the early game from Dusty, they let vision slip for a moment and match code with their intriguing, intricate, different competition, walk away with an incredibly important objective. It's just such a massive move there, especially when the game felt like it was slowly getting away from you. That's now two objectives that Dusty have not been able to take. That is just such a huge play for Machko to keep him in this game. And not only that, but just again, just kind of getting the confidence off of Dusty. And speaking of confidence, now they're feeling good to try and make this one work, but that's still an Aphelio, so you cannot just go straight oh, no. head first into him. I had to praise him. I had to give them so much to, to the good because at the end of it all, they kind of throw it all away. Dude, the chain lands. He's gonna just break. Flasher. Oh, he's just dead as well. Collapsed on all sides. Well, I can still admire the gusto, shall we say, coming out from Machko as they made a very, very solid play. But again, this is kind of the difference between a lot of our, yep. you know, developing regions and our more established ones is that you are not going to get this, you know, you're not going to get away with such a overzealous play in the mid lane if you're, you know, if you're against yeah. Dusty or any of our bigger teams. And that's something which I really want to talk about as well, because Dusty as a team just have this rock solid mental fortitude. They had such a large winning streak in the last part of the split from NLC. And even when they started dropping games in playoffs, they held on, they reverse swept that finals. And even in this game, you can see them make what is actually a pretty huge mistake but they don't let it cower them. They immediately bounce back, immediately pounce, and they just aren't affected by match go and their incredible magic at all. They just turn around and say, okay, cool. That's the state of the game now. Here's how we show you how we get back into it. They take a couple of kills and the Baron buff, uh, Baron buff is immediately dispelled from so many important members of match go. They can no longer split the map the, the way they wanted to. Yeah, it just feels like you just have to play a little bit slower, a little bit more conservative. You know, there's plenty of standing gold to go for you. But Renekton, you've got Baron Buff, you've got so many good things going for you. But now we're going to have to bring ourselves right back into the action as Seaboy. I don't know exactly where he is, but the dragon is not going to be spawning for another 40 seconds or so. He's just trying to try and be a bit of a nuisance. And now Kerberos, oh, no flash, no way to leave. And now you've got your super tank getting super killed right there. Just really, again, overzealous, overestimating just how much he could tank. And what Machko are doing really well is abusing the fact that top lane Sidronis just don't take flash. If you get on top of them, that Q doesn't travel through enemy champions. You just get stuck in the knockup. Now then, Voxne very close to ACD. Full rage bar not able to use as much of it. It's 10 seconds till his dragon, and around these objectives, Machko are continuing to fight. Yeah, they're still gonna go for it. Machko trying to see if they can get Seaboy onto the backside, but this Aphelios is untouched, flourishing, moisturized in his lane and focused, looking to just take them back. And again, small little oh. moments. Oh, ha ha, flashes, but then ends up kind of laughing in tears because he gave his ADC up for the goose. Nice little turret just to stop the train from landing onto the Heimerdinger. 
But yeah, Dusty kind of just getting a little bit of a, a, a smack back on the wrist as they get a haymaker back to and Machko. Every time Machko have gone into Dusty, it is the Nautilus aficionado, the Nautilus connoisseur. 15th game of summer, and it looks just as beautiful as the first time you played it. Sen gets a huge ultimate, gets a huge hook at the end of the fight to secure another kill as well. Whenever Machko have moved away from their turrets, you can see how well Dusty have punished it, particularly Sen. That is a godlike hook. I mean, he puts himself in a position where he's like, look, I'm either hitting you or I'm hitting this person behind you. So you got to make a call <laughs> and, right now. And, and particularly in the case of Sten, um, really want to shout back to, again, this interview he uh, did with Archeron very recently, where he was saying he has big aspirations. He knows that he's going to be around in the URLs for a little bit to try and develop, but he wants to go to the LFL next year, get picked up by a big team, and then make his way into the LEC. This guy is, has aspirations, and when you see him like play like this, you start thinking, actually, maybe it's not just aspirations. Maybe you can just do it. Well, see, boy. Thought he was maybe all right to go into the two tanks of Dusty, but that is a three-item Sejuani and a uh, pretty pretty, yes, pretty beefy, beefy front line. Pretty beefy, and it actually does a fair bit of damage when you are able to solo someone out like that. But we come back into live. It's a 9,000 gold lead here for Dusty. There's two dragons apiece. Machiko able to get two of those. They're not quite on soul point and really nowhere near it for the next, like, nine minutes or so yeah. to the side of Dusty. But the rest of the base is kind of in shadows, and you will finally pick up your first tower of the game. But at 26 and a half minutes, not exactly an ideal timing to be picking up that objective. No, uh, it opens up the map a little bit. But the big problem is you're not really winning any of your lane pushes anymore. I think that after we saw that... Um... That big second dragon uh, play where Dusty got that kill mid lane from Kerberos roaming down, and then the mid lane, the mid lane was occupied by Dendrox and Sten. The Heimerdinger hasn't had the wave push impact you normally expect of it. Speaking of uh, impact of the Heimerdinger, he's not really able to impact these skirmishes either because he's not been able to push. It means that Seaboy has to fend for himself. Yeah, he's fairly tanky, built up to two items, so he has a fair amount of beef with a bit of AP on top of it. But they're losing their own jungle camps, and there isn't too much with Mash Ghost to say about it. Yeah, see, boy, trying to see if he can maybe bait someone out there with the clone, maybe get some kind of a uh, a, a movement there towards something that could maybe go in Machko's favor. But Dusty, wise to the antics, wise to the tricks of the trickster, and they're just backing mm. themselves away. No real kind of loss for them at the moment. And now it's going to be Dusty just kind of just suffocating the vision right now. Very difficult for Machko to go for a Baron flip if they can't get Sea Boy into the pit. Exactly. They've controlled the top side of the map. Don't really care that ACD is. Uh heading down towards that bot side and Backlund very happy sat in the side lane 15 stacks on the Magi's like what were we saying very hard to kill as this mid laner just needs to get a bit of kill involvement and suddenly you're a big AP threat now he does have the teleport might have to channel it here because ACD has come towards this mid lane here we go yes they yeah, have they know exactly where he is he gets hooked he gets CC'd and he gets absolutely zero impact in that fight and now without your real kind of backline threat available to you Machko don't really have a a hope or a prayer, really, in this particular fight. So they're going to lose their top lane, and they're going to lose their inhibitor. And honestly, Dusty got to turn and burn for the Baron. Yeah, they are. They are so ruthless on that turn. They understand where they're pushing into, and they know that they have the damage to take down the Renekton, even though he is fairly beefy himself. So Dusty, once again, control the map. They uh, made that one mistake around the Baron, but they won't make that happen again. They control the top side of the map. They're going to start playing blocker to all the rest of the members of Machko who want to get closer. And that stand is ready and waiting with a flash over the wall. Oh, they're going to land a bubble. Not quite able to get the uh, clone off of that particular one there. And Kerberos kind of goes into a little bit of a 1v2 and a half, as you can see the clone kind of doing some decent work. They are still onto the Baron and still taking it down fairly decently here. And they should be able to secure that on the side of Dusty. So no need to try and, you know, get the flip going for them. They got Seaboy's ultimate and his uh, blink off of them. So pick up the Baron, reset, get more items, get back out on the map. They are, and this should really be the death push. Um, and Dusty, I think this is a good representation of this team. I think we're seeing a lot of the hallmarks of this team for those who are less familiar with them. And while there was that one little hiccup, hiccup this is by no means a, uh, a bad game from them. Very dominant from start to finish ever since that level one. And now they have this Baron. Have to expect them to close this one out. And the rest of the teams in their group will be looking at this and seeing what they can do to take Dusty off of some of these comfort picks afterwards. The Nautilus, the Aphelios, most of the map, let's be honest. Because match go, while they tried to match comfort with comfort, Dusty have come out on top. Dusty ain't looking so dusty right now. They are happy 
with what they've got in front of them with the Baron Buff and Super Minions in the mid lane. They're going to be the put Kerberos up the top side. He's got a TP. 40 seconds till the dragon spawns, so he's in no rush whatsoever to join his team. ACD, though, might be in a little bit of trouble. They've got the single target CC, and he's going to have to flash away almost immediately. And not having that flash on your Renekton is so, yes. so, there's just so much you can't do now. Yeah, and specifically for Renekton, because you lack so much target mobility, it's why we often see stuff like Prowler's Claw, right? Because he needs that extra oomph to get on top of the target he wants to. Now you have to get onto this Aphelios without Flash, going through the Wukong ultimate, going through the Sejuani. You are not going to be able to do that unless you get a godlike angle, and we've already tried to see them. We've seen them try to do that flank TP. It just didn't work. Not having that Flash, I think you're right. Calling that one out, not really much you can do, but it doesn't stop you, of course, from just doing loads of damage once you get there, and Kerberos is discovering it. Yep, Kerberos is realizing, yes, he is a super tank, but that is four members of the side of Machko kind of taking him out. Still need to respect the damage coming out here from the three item Heimerdinger. And uh, now third dragon of the game going over to the Dusty. That's going to be our fifth one, funny enough. And we are all now finally onto a soul point. Five more minutes before that is going to be available. But with the way Dusty are playing, you feel like they're going to want to try and end the game a little bit sooner than that. Now, they still have uh, the last quarter of this Baron buff. They have the rifle turrets, Calibrum, Crescendum combo from the Felios. And if that bubble had landed, maybe something good could have happened off of that. But Backlund slips back towards his initial launch pad. They push forward with those rifle turrets. And Machko, they don't have many angles to go in now. Yeah, you're kind of uh, knocking on the front door, which is uh, fairly obvious, and they know exactly what you're doing. So uh, the advantage is definitely to Dusty as they start to just kind of pin everybody back. Baron up still for another 20 seconds. They're going to be able to maybe make this a push onto the inhibitor and crack that one open. Stand. So we're going to see a flash burnt there. The Nautilus nearly got caught out, but the Gravitum is good. Seaboy trying to Ooh. get away but he just gets deleted down. That's going to be the AD carry picking up another one. There's Aphelios, it's just too damn big, Nymera, and this game is looking like it's done. Oh, divided, they try to conquer, but they fall in the base together. Dusty starting off the Amazon European Masters with a win. Good start for Dusty, good start for the NLC. They do keep themselves on a 1-0 trajectory in groups. We won't talk about play-ins. And for Machko, oh, love the creativity, love the idea behind it. But again, came down to the execution. Because even when they snuck away that Baron, it didn't matter. Because they then no. threw it all away. It, it didn't really make a difference. It just delayed the inevitable. Yeah, and I think you can see the individual quality of what Dusty bring as the NLC first seed. I think a lot of people do, and I mean, memes aside, yeah, losing a seed in planes does end up dampening some expectations as from this region, but seriously, don't underrate this team. They have some very good fundamentals, especially when you see them on Comfort Champions like we saw in this game. Other teams in the group will have to look at this and see if it's worth doing that again in a best of one. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's going to come down to kind of, you know, did Dusty just get everything they wanted, or is this going to be, again, the trend, shall we say, for the rest of the groups? It's going to be a, uh, a difficult one to see the kind of where they want to go for it and uh, kind of what they want to do with it. But we're going to send it to a quick break. And when we return, we're going to have ourselves a little bit of a winner's interview.